Welcome to the video and introduction to tilt compensation in Sightworks. Firstly, to turn tilt compensation on or off, there's two places you can do this. You can enable it in the receiver setup menu, just here. Or, once you get into the main map screen, you can simply click on the GNSS icon in the top right hand corner, click on the settings tab, and you've got the option to enable or disable tilt compensation. Once it's enabled, you have a new icon that you're not used to. We've got a red aligned icon in the top right hand corner, and you'll notice that no precision values are showing. Now, to align your receiver, simply tilt it a bit so the receiver experiences accelerations, or you can walk to your first point to measure. Once there, you'll quickly notice that the aligned icon has changed green and some precision values are displayed. Your receiver is now ready to take tilt compensated measurements. A couple of other features. Firstly, we want to make sure that you set the pole height correct when using tilt compensation. And that's quite simple. Basically, we're projecting the height from here down to here, and the two meter pole height is very important to get correct. You'll also notice that I'm not using a quick release, and this is the recommended method. In the main map screen, a couple of other features. You can see that in the information panel, I've got some new, inf more information. The heading, pitch, and roll is displayed. And this heading is also related to True North. So you can turn these on or off and set them in the information bar or information panel. New information is also stored in the point information tab as well as when you export data to a CSV and tick the include QA data option. And finally there's some new data stored in the log file. If I go to the end of this you can see that when I've started here at the very bottom tilt compensation is enabled. So once tilt compensation is working, you can begin to start work. The very first thing, like in any good survey, is you, could, you should stake out a control point, just to check how well tilt compensation is working. So I'm going to stake this control point here, put it on the mark, and it's pretty good. And you can see, I can tilt my pole and it gives me a really good idea on how accurate tilt compensation is. So I can, once I'm happy with that point, I'm not worried about the level bubble, I store the point. The next benefit is we can go into standing or walking mode. Now I'm going to, it's also available in vehicle mode, but for this video I'm just going to concentrate on the pole mounted tilt compensation. So I'm going to select standing and then I'm going to capture a point and I'm going to capture an invert. So tilt compensation can capture inaccessible points, for example inverts of pipes, I can capture this point. And secondly, it can help capture more accurately points that were difficult. So in this case, I can capture this light pole using tilt compensation mode quickly and easily. So I can capture one, two, And a fourth point, and I can close that line. And now you can see I've got a really accurate point. Using tilt compensation in Trimble Sightworks, you can more accurately and productively capture points you previously couldn't. So, for example, the corners of a building. Now, one important thing to note about Sightworks and the SPS 986 is it uses IMUs to calculate the pole tip position. What this means is that it is immune to magnetic disturbances, so it doesn't rely on a compass. That means you can measure near, near large metallic objects like this metallic building container. Being immune to large metallic objects mean you, means you can work around machinery a lot more. So if someone's parked their motor grader in the way, you can still carry on with your work 
and check grade underneath it. Using tilt compensation, the added benefit is you can now reach inaccessible places. For example, under tyres. The other benefit of tilt compensation is that it's a lot more productive to stake points. So you can simply select the point and instead of concentrating on keeping the bubble level, you can worry about where you're actually going and use the stick as a pen and more accurately get to the point. Record the location, mark it up and move on to your next point. Again, I'm using my pointer, I'm accurately walking, I'm not worrying about my bubble, I'm actually worrying about the distance I need to go. And I can accurately get to my location and record that.